It's a very important day. 70 years. And, and, it, and the importance is that, there is that so far there's been so, that so many people have, 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 have responded. And we've never had as many people as nearly 5,000. And we look forward that it's going to be every year like this. It's so quite remarkable to see the courage, the vibrancy uh, of the survivors, to have so many of them with us here, to have the chance for so many members of the community to see them, pay tribute to them. That, I think, will be the most special part of this afternoon's proceedings. My name is Rolf Penzias. I came on the Kinder Transport in January 39 from Munich, Germany, and I've been all my life in England. Yom HaShoah means to me the remembrance of all the thousands, the millions of people that were killed in all the camps, the concentration camps, the work camps, and it's our way of my generation and the younger generation after me to give them the respect that they so thoroughly deserve. Well, it means a lot of things to me. It means remembering all my grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles. Some of them made it, a lot of them didn't make it. I was one of the lucky ones. My brother and I made it and we made our home in England, we studied in England, we qualified in England as engineers. And during the war I worked helping England to win the war. There are still terrible things going on throughout the world. We say never again, but unfortunately it's still happening. But let's hope that one day never again will mean exactly that. My name is Ziggy Schipper. I was born in Poland in a city called Lodz. I'm a Holocaust survivor. I've lived in Britain now for 60 odd years. And I couldn't have chosen a better country than I did. My name is Henrietta Frank. I married a man called Frank. It's a second name for Frank. He was, he was lucky enough to be born in this country, but I have been very lucky in my life and I married a very nice man and my sister was 12 when she came. She cried a whole year, she was so homesick and I had a brother 14 and both died very young. I never saw my father again, he went to Sobibor. My mother they were living in the south of France, from country to country, and ended up in the south of France, where they took my father, went to Sobibor. My mother was left on her own, and she went with some other people to, to Italy. And she walked over the mountains into Switzerland, and she told me that behind, when she was on the mountain, behind her the Nazis were shooting the people. And I devoted my life in the last 20 odd years to speak to school all over Great Britain. Because young people should know what hatred, prejudice and racism can do. So that's why I do it. They say to me, but you're an old man, wouldn't you rather sit at home? I said, no. I get so much out of it when I see the children, 15, 16 year old children sitting there quietly for one and a half hours. I wonder how many grown-ups could have done that, you know. So I do it and I'll be doing it as long as I can because I find it so important. I came with a kinder transport. I was 15 years old. I came to family and uh, I was in the army three years, the British army, sometimes people ask me which army, which I think is so stupid. And tomorrow morning, very early, I'm off to Cologne, where I was born, and I'm talking to schools. I'm talking to five schools and one afternoon to teachers, and that's tomorrow. And I'm nearly 92 years old. It, it, of course, you've got to remember that most of us are between 85 and 90. And how much longer will we be? The 80th anniversary, maybe one or two, maybe. So it is very important, to me especially. I just, Friday, I came back, Friday lunchtime, I came back from Poland. I was there for the March of the Living. 
In January I was there for the Holocaust Memorial Day and today I'm here and people ask me why do you keep going? I said it's very very important we must not forget. My name is Henrietta Kelly maiden name Steinberg. I was a child in Bergen Belsen with my mum. We were I think now that we were hostages. We were there for 20 months and at the end we were deported by the Germans out of Belsen on a train before the Allies came, before the British came and we were eventually liberated by the Russians. It's a very long story. Hi, I'm Abigail Saunders and I was on March of the Living this past week. Yeah, so it's a trip um, that's done worldwide and the United Kingdom made a delegation five years ago. Um, my father actually was the one who started up the, the UK delegation and what they do is they take you to all different camps and all different um, sites and they do past, they do um, before the war started and then after the war and they show everyone and like their delegation what it was like to live in Poland before the Nazis took over. That is the only goal what it went into our Swiss beer canal and came out with the original owner how it happened when the Germans invaded Hungary then we had to give up everything my brother put that before they took us in the ghettos in the hill for my mother shoe then we were taken to cotton truck and we were taken to the camp. Just the last day before we arrived there, my mother said we should change shoes. So I had the shoes. When we arrived to Auschwitz, they took my brother, my mother, my brother, my younger sister, straight to the crematorium. I with my other two sisters survived. They took away everything from us. They left only to keep our shoes. And like that, that was with me all the time. But in the camp, the heel on the shoe was wearing off. So what could I do with it? It was no, I had even not a piece of paper, nothing. So I put there and it was also put in the shoes for a few jewelry for my mother. Everything there I put in the piece of bread what we had and like that, that survived the camp. And we were also very lucky to have six Holocaust survivors with us on March of the Living. And we went to their tent and they could explain to us what they went through and showed us different things from their past. My name is Matthew Offord. I was the Member of Parliament for Hendon and I'm hoping to be elected again in 2015. The Holocaust education is very important and I'm very pleased that the Holocaust Education Trust is continuing with their programming of taking particularly six formers uh, out to places like Auschwitz to see what happened, to see the horrors and for them to come back and talk to their peers and explain what happened and how we can work to, in the future to prevent it ever happening again. And politicians like David Cameron have introduced recently um, financial initiatives in order to promote Holocaust education. That's good, isn't it? Well, I think this is not just good, but it, is, it shows that he cares. He's got an understanding about it. He knows what we went through. He, 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 he heard what survivors, that what happened to them, and he was very moved, and as a result, he did it, because he understands it. And Holocaust education is very important because unfortunately we don't know how long the survivors are going to have left so we are we should be the ones who can tell on their stories. I'm Andrew Dismore, I'm the Labour London Assembly Member for Bonn and Camden and I'm the Labour Parliamentary Candidate for Hendon, formerly the Labour MP. Yes, I was very pleased when I was the MP before that our government decided to support the Holocaust Educational Trust with their visits to Auschwitz to make sure that sixth formers are able to go every year to then feed back in their own schools their experiences and their knowledge and what they learn. We have to maintain the memory to make sure these things never happen again.
Ma uh, I am uh, Monsignor Antonio Menini, Archbishop of Soli Nunzio to Great Britain, and it's for me a great honor, a privilege to be here to show solidarity and support from Catholic Church and uh, specifically from the Holy See to the Jewish community in Great Britain in this important, although very sad, anniversary. So we know very well that in the last decade, thanks to God, relations between Catholic Church and Jews uh, all over the world have improved a lot and that is very important, I see, also for the peace all over the world. Because when a religion uh, talks among themselves, it is uh, something always uh, positive for the future of uh, uh, human uh, uh, of the whole uh, human family.